This is the new ZV E10 II. It's a 26 megapixel APS-C size sensor that can shoot 4K 60 frames per second in full 10-bit 422. The 4K is oversampled from a 5.6K image, and this camera was designed for content creators. It's tiny, it has fast autofocus, and it has active stabilization, perfect for vlogging. It's the same sensor that you're going to find in the FX30 or A6700, but in a ZV body. So I decided to take this camera out into the wilderness and really test how well it works to make a video. Now quick disclaimer, Sony did send this camera out to me to test. It's a loaner. It's a pre-production unit. It even says right on it, not for sale or lease right on the bottom of the camera and the lens. However, Sony had no input into this video. This is not a sponsored video. There was no money that exchanged hands. I just got access to the camera early and I could do whatever I want with it. So let's actually get out of the truck because it's super hot today and let's go start testing this camera, see what kind of footage we can get out of it. So I just got to camp and a couple buddies out there in the distance, but my goal with this video is to really test this camera for those of you who want to use it to make videos here on YouTube. I'm using this kit lens. It's a 16 to 50 version two, 3.5 to 5.6. So not a consistent aperture. And I'm using some auto settings in the camera because I'm trying to make the whole filming process a little bit easier. You can take full manual control of this camera, but it is set up for content creators. And there's plenty of content creators who don't want to do full manual and control every setting. Rather, they just want to get a good look at the camera, make it easy, tell an interesting story. So, uh, yeah, we are gonna head out on a little mountain bike that way. And so I'll kind of explore the different things around this camera while also testing it in this vlog style. One of the key features that's set up for creators is this auto exposure mode that prioritizes faces. This way, even though I'm shooting with auto exposure, the camera is going to focus on my face and expose it properly versus just exposing for the overall scene. And what happens is that no matter what's going on around the person, the exposure of the face will always be good so that you can use it in this vlog way. <laughs> Oh, just got started and uh, he forgot his sunglasses. So he's going back. But that's my buddy Danny. I go out exploring with him all the time. You probably have seen him in some of the videos. He has his Tacoma and I have my Jeep and we go exploring. But yeah, so we came up here just to test out this camera, do some mountain biking, do some camping tonight. So tonight what I'll do is I'll test this with some low light capabilities because good sensor. It's not a full frame, but even so, this is a like, really good sensor for a cropped APS-C size sensor. And it allows the camera to be absolutely tiny. Like this is smaller than my ZV-E1. The way that they've built the ergonomics on this camera, I wish my ZV-E1 had these ergonomics because this is easier to hold, it's easier to vlog with. The weight of this camera is only 377 grams and that's including the battery and memory card. And this camera takes the same battery that you find on Sony's other mirrorless bodies. For ports, you get a mic in, mic out, USB-C, micro HDMI. On the top, there's a hot shoe mount, and I shot this whole video using the Sony M1 microphone that connects directly to the camera. <sighs> Where are we at? Well, we're in a boulder field. I think this is the squeeze, and maybe it's those. Those rocks? Oh yeah, look at that. There's a, out here, there's a trail called the squeeze. And I think it is right here because you have to squeeze through these two boulders. Ooh, I'm shooting at an F14. Let's wind out F3.5. This lens, 
the widest it opens up is at 3.5. So this is the kind of like shallow depth of field that you can get with this lens. Problem is when you zoom, it also closes down the aperture. So see this, I'm gonna zoom in on Danny and now we're shooting at f5.6. So when you're at the full 50 millimeter, oh, when you're at the full 50, this is the shot that you get. And let's widen out, go to a 3.5. You're gonna get me super wide. Well, I'm just getting you the same shot, but look at the. There you go. There's the depth of field in the background. I mean, that's the problem with kit lenses is you don't have a consistent aperture. Well, that's enough stalling. I guess we should get over these boulders. For being a small kit lens, I'm impressed with the performance, especially for the size. The weight is 107 grams, and it's 8% lighter than the previous model. For video, it's smooth, quiet, and the autofocus works great, even up to 120 frames per second. <sighs> Yo, check this out. Up top there, a bunch of climbing routes. There's one that's called a good way, a good day to die. Good day to die. Good day to die. Yeah, that sounds like a great climb. But you can see the mounting points at the top. I'll uh, I'll zoom in with the lens. So this is zooming into a 50, but with this camera, you can punch in even further to 1.5 times. So this is technically a 75 on a crop sensor. And you could see all the way up there. So this camera has the clear image zoom enabled just automatically when you start zooming. I mean, you could turn this feature off, but it's got the, the zoom toggle on the top of the camera. So you could either use that or with, you know, this kit lens, it's a power zoom. So you just twist it and it, it rotates and it zooms in. But with the, this camera has the same setup as the ZV-E1 where on top, you have the toggle to be able to zoom. So if you're using a power zoom lens, you can just handhold the camera and be able to zoom without even touching the lens. Now for color in this camera, you have access to S-Log3, S-Cinetone, and there's also a set of creative looks that you can customize in camera. I shot this entire vlog using S-Log3 and color graded with my set of adventure LUTs. And one cool thing that you can do is add your LUTs into camera and shoot with them so you can see exactly what you're getting at all times. Check out this really mushroom shaped rock. Must be like two different types of rock and the one underneath is like being eroded away. Let me show you this strap I have. I have the fall cam strap and because I use the Shimoda backpack, these straps are actually much thicker than other camera backpacks. So I've always had a struggle to find a proper shoulder mount that would fit. So this fall cam one is actually held on by these straps. And I've had no problem hiking with this, traveling with this on planes. And I've just, I've been mountain biking with it. And it basically locks by just pulling down, going up, unlocks it, and then you can pull the camera out with just pushing on that. Super simple but like very sturdy and perfect for this kind of stuff. So I think I'm done playing around with this lens. We did a plenty of tests exploring how this lens works and got some footage with it. I have a couple other lenses, some fun ones, and we're gonna go see what the rest of the people are doing. And uh, I'm gonna try to shoot some stuff using some different lenses. I'll explain it when we get over there. So I brought along the 85. I'm gonna, we're gonna shoot some climbing. Danny's about to go up. And um, I'm gonna change this and get off auto settings. I'm gonna go all manual. Shoot at proper shutter speed for motion blur that has that more cinematic look. So I'm gonna put some ND filters on the 85. 85 with a 1.5 times crop is like, what, 100 and something? So super long lens. And uh, this would be perfect for climbing. Let's, um, let's change it up a bit. Now this camera is not only built for vloggers. 
I could easily see this being a B cam for any of Sony's bigger bodies because the sensor looks great and you have access to 10-bit 422 so you can take control of your image and really color grade it to get a good look. And for filmmakers, you have breathing compensation built in so no matter which Sony lens you use, you'll be able to focus smoothly without seeing any breathing in the lenses. So I've switched over to the 16 to 25 f 2.8, shooting at 2.8, double shutter speed than my frame rate. So you get the nice motion blur that's cinematic. You also get nice shallow depth of field. And I'm just kind of wandering these rocks. This is like an adult playground for sure. All of this climbing, but then even if you're not climbing, there's just all these cool areas to explore. Now one thing, with this camera, there's no stabilization inside the camera. So with this, if you have a lens that's stabilized, you get standard stabilization, but this lens is not a stabilized lens. So there is no stabilization unless you turn on active. So this camera has active stabilization, just like Sony's other cameras. So it punches in on the footage and it does a digital stabilization, but there's no sensor stabilization. So the sensor's fixed. So depending on which lenses you're working with, this could be a problem. I've been using this setup and because it's so lightweight, it's easy to, you know, handhold. And this is with stabilization turned off. So you tell me, do you think this is too shaky to use? Do you need that standard stabilization? Um, let me know. All right, so let me show you some interesting features on this camera. So how you control between photo, video, and S and Q mode is just right here. So you could flip as you're shooting between these different modes. So you wanna go from slow and quick mode, which is slow motion and time-lapse, video, or photo. Now, you also, when you're in auto mode, you have these automation features that make shooting videos so much easier. So, right up here, you have a defocusing background. So, when you're in auto, you click this and the background will go out of focus. And when you click it again, the background will go back in focus. Now, you have another one of these automation buttons right here on the front. The same button that is the trash can, it's also product showcase. So, when you use this button, if you put a product in front of the lens, it's going to automatically snap focus to that even if there's a face back there. It's kind of a cool feature to use if you're someone that's talking about products. Now when we look at the screen, it has the same screen setup that you have on all of Sony's cameras now. So you swipe in and you swipe out for these side menus and you have things on here like cinematic vlog. So turn that on, it auto automatically gives you settings for a quote unquote cinematic vlog. Now you also have your audio above that it has the same microphone that you find on the ZV-E1. So you have the microphone be adjusting the sound automatically when you're recording. So if you're in front of it, it's gonna optimize for in front. If it's behind, it's gonna optimize for behind, or it's gonna do more of this omnidirectional. Now also with the touchscreen, you can swipe up to get your quick menu, and you can add a bunch of different options in here. So if you wanna clear all that, you can clear all away. Everything's done through touch, so you can click any buttons on here and change any settings, or you can click the buttons that are mapped out here or on top. Now let's go deeper into some of the menus. So let's turn on the menu and you can see that you have the same quick menus that you find on Sony's other cameras. This is gonna have pretty much every setting that you want right here. And when you're shooting log, you have a quick button to just turn on S-Log3. So everything in this camera makes it super easy. If you do wanna take full manual control or if you want full auto, well, you could easily shoot that way as well. Now, I've switched over to the ZV-E1 on the same 16 to 25. You see how much wider it is because this is a full frame camera. It's very much like a stripped down version of this camera. It has a lot of the same features, but it doesn't have all of the same AI tracking and auto features that you have in the 6700 or the ZV-E1 or the FX30. So it's a little bit more limited. However, it has all the features that I personally would use I think it has plenty packed into this tiny little camera. It's just so incredibly small. So I'm gonna switch back over to the ZV-E10 II. 
let's put this 16 to 25 on and let's shoot a little sequence cooking dinner because the sun is dipping in the sky. It's going to get a little darker. Right, let's see what kind of shots we can get around camp here. I'm going to take full control and try to get some creative compositions and all of that. The price of this camera is $999, and it's another $100 if you get it with the kit lens. And I think for any content creator, this is a solid choice. It's small and unobtrusive, but has a ton of professional level features, and the footage looks great from the camera. Now you combine this camera with some of the small APS-C sized lenses that Sony offers, and you have an easy way to shoot your videos. For me, I'd be happy to vlog with this camera, because filming with it is just easy. So I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments. And next, you should check out this video right here, which is really going to help you out when you're crafting your next video. I'll see you on the next video.